For the last few lessons, we have been dealing with concepts that are fairly abstract and that have been new to most of you. In today's lesson, we're going back to something that's more familiar. We're going back to dot product. Now we're going to lead from dot product into other abstract concepts such as the inner product and the inner product spaces. The length of a vector v equal to v1, v2 out to the vn in r space or in n space is given by, and this is a symbol for the length of v, also called the magnitude. So the magnitude of v is the square root of v sub 1 squared plus v sub 2 squared out to and including v sub n squared. Example, let's find the length of negative 1, 2, 3. So we have the vector negative 1, 2, 3. We want to find the length. The length is a magnitude. The magnitude of negative 1, 2, 3 is the square root of negative 1 squared plus 2 squared plus a negative 3 squared, which is going to be the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 14. So the magnitude of the vector, negative 1, 2, negative 3, is the square root of 14. Two non-zero vectors, u and v, in n space are parallel if and only if one is a scalar multiple of the other. In other words, u and v are parallel if and only if u is c times v for some scalar c. So what we're defining here would be parallel. Example, 2, 6, negative 8 and 1, 3, negative 4 are parallel. The reason is 2, 6, negative 8 is equal to 2 times 1, 3, negative 4. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So 2, 6, negative 8 is a scalar multiple of 1, 3, negative 4. So therefore, the vectors are parallel. The unit vector u in the direction of v in n space is u equal to v divided by the magnitude of v. Unit vector has length equal to 1. Now think about V has both length and magnitude. So by leaving the V, they expect, I mean, V has both length and magnitude, same thing. V has both magnitude and direction. So by saying U is equal to V divided by the magnitude of V, I am dividing the length component by its magnitude. That would be 1. So the length ends up being 1. And the direction is still going to be that of v because I'm really multiplying by a scalar. The length of, or the magnitude of v is going to be a scalar. So when I divide by it, I'm multiplying by 1 over the scalar. So the direction stays the same. The length becomes 1. Find a unit vector in the direction of v. That's vector v, equal to negative 1, 3, 2, 0. Well, the unit vector u is going to be v divided by 
the magnitude of V. So it's going to be negative 1, 3, 2, 0 divided by the magnitude of V, which is going to be negative 1 squared 1, plus 3 squared is 9, plus 2 squared is 4, plus 0, which is going to equal 2, negative 1, 3, 2, 0, over the square root of 14, which would equal to a negative 1 over the square root of 14, 3 over the square root of 14, 2 over the square root of 14, 0. I'll leave it to you to verify that u is indeed a unit vector. The distance between two vectors, u and v, in n space is denoted by d, parentheses uv, the distance between u and v, and it is defined to be the magnitude of u minus v. Well, by definition of magnitude, we see right off that the distance between u and v is greater than or equal to zero, because the magnitude would be a square root Square root is always positive or zero. The distance between u and v is zero if and only if u is equal to v. And the distance from u to v is equal to the distance from v to u. So all these are pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's find the distance between negative 2, 0, 5 and 1, 5, negative 2. Well, the distance between negative 2, 0, 5 and 1, 5, negative 2 is the magnitude of a negative 2, 0, 5 minus 1, 5, negative 2. So the distance between u and v is defined to be the magnitude of u minus v. This is going to be the magnitude of Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 5 subtracted negative 2 is 7. Which would be the square root of 9 plus 25 plus 49 which is equal to the square root of 83. Now we're ready to define dot product. Let u be the vector u1, u2 out to u and n and let b be the vector, v1, v2 out to b, v the n. Then u dot v, the dot product of u and v, is defined to be u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus out to and including un times vn. In other words, for the dot product, I simply multiply corresponding components.
example, find the dot product of 1, 3, 5, negative 1, and 4, 2, negative 2, 6. So 1, 3, 5, negative 1, dot, 4, 2, negative 2, 6, is equal to 1 times 4, plus 3 times 2, plus 5 times negative 2, plus a negative 1 times 6. Just multiply corresponding components. 1 times 4, 2 times 3, 5 times negative 2, negative 1 times 6, which is 4 plus 6 minus 10 minus 6. 1 times 4 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. The 6's will cancel, 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Now let's look at some properties of dot product. Let's let u, v, and w be vectors in n space and let c be any real scalar. First property is the commutative property of dot product u, v is v, u. The dot product is distributive over vector addition. There should be a dot here. So u dot v plus w is u dot v plus u dot w. So dot product is distributive over vector addition. The scalar times u dot v is equal to the scalar times u dot v or u times the scalar or I mean u dot the scalar times v. So the scalar can if you're having the scalar outside the parentheses of u dot v, then you can multiply the scalar with u and then dot it with v, or you can multiply the scalar by v and dot it with u. I'm going to prove this property for you in a few moments and the other proofs follow the same pattern. So you probably should go through all the proofs on your own or either look at it in the textbook. I'm going to prove this one for you and we'll be using it a great deal later on. V dot V is the magnitude of V squared. V dot V is the magnitude of V squared. Well, V dot V is obviously greater than or equal to zero just because the magnitude is going to be greater than or equal to zero. V dot V is equal to zero if and only if the vector is zero. So those are the properties of dot product. In space, along with vector addition, scalar multiplication, vector length, and dot product is called Euclidean in space. So you take in space, you take that with the operation of vector addition, the operation of scalar multiplication, the definition of vector length, and the operation of dot product, along with the properties of these things, you have Euclidean in space. Okay, let's go back and prove the fourth 
property. So what we want to prove is that V dot V is equal to the magnitude of V squared. Let's let vector V equal to V1, V2, out to Vn. Well then V dot V is going to be V1 times V1 plus V2 times V2 plus out to including Vn times Vn because I multiply corresponding components which is going to be V1 squared plus V2 squared plus out to including Vn squared which is the magnitude of V squared because this, this completes the proof, but remember that the magnitude of V is defined to be the square root of V1 squared plus V2 squared plus out to including Vn squared. So then if I come and square both sides, I'm left with the magnitude of V on this side and V1, V2, and so forth on the other side. So that's why I can make the statement from here to here. The other proofs are just as easy as here. It's the same pattern. We go ahead and use a definition to expand it and then collapse it back to what we need. The angle theta between two non-zero vectors, u and v, in n space is given by cosine theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of v times the magnitude of u. Now you can derive this result from the law of cosines, and we derive it in calculus class. You can also find it in most textbooks and reference books. So I'm not going to actually derive it today. I'm just going to show you how to uh, use it. Now we are assuming that theta is between 0 and pi. Okay, find the angle between negative 2, 4, 3 and 4, negative 1, 6. Well looking back, cosine theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of v times the magnitude of U. So we have cosine theta is U dot V, which is going to be negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 3 times 6 is 18. So that's the dot product, negative 8, negative 4, 18 divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Well, the magnitude of u is going to be 4, 2 squared is 4, plus 16, plus 9. Magnitude of v is going to be 16, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1, plus 36. Negative 8 plus negative 4 is negative 12, plus 18 is 6 over the square root of 29 times the square root of 53. 36 and 1 is 37, 37 and 16, or 37 and 10 would be 47 and 6 would be 
53. Well, using the calculator, I get cosine theta is equal to 0 0.15304. Three, three. Using the inverse cosine function then, I get theta is equal to 81.2 degrees.